Welcome back to another video, Gary McCready from HVAC Know It All. So we're going to talk about superheat here and why it's important and why it's important for a compressor to have a certain amount of superheat, not too much, not too little. If you want to check out a video of checking superheat in the field, I'll leave this card right here so you guys can go check it out after you're done with this one, or you can check it out first and come back and watch this one afterwards. So what is superheat? Well, its simplest definition is anything above the saturation or boiling point of the refrigerant. So let's look at an example. So we are looking at the refrigerant slider on the Danfoss Ref Tools app. This is 410A. Now if we look at the pressure temperature relationship, if we were to put our gauges on a machine and we were getting a 40 degree evaporator at 118.8 PSIG, well that is our saturation point, okay? We are at our boiling point of the refrigerant. So anything above that 40 degrees is what we would describe as superheat. So if we put a temperature probe on our suction line and we were reading 50 degrees on that suction line, because we have a 40 degree saturation, we now have 10 degrees of superheat. So there's an example using a PT chart. And if you guys want an awesome PT chart, this is the best one that I've seen in the industry so far. So let's check superheat on this example. This is a cropped cut out from a Danfoss animation and this is a cold room slash walk-in cooler and for this we're going to use R404A because it's still a commonly used refrigerant in North America for this type of application. So what we want to do first is attach our pressure probe to the suction line. We're going to get our saturated conditions. Saturated suction temperature is very very important to get. Then we're going to add our clamp to the outlet of the evaporator and get our actual pipe temperature. So what we want to do here is take our actual pipe temperature and then subtract our saturated suction temperature of 404A. That will give us our evaporator superheat in this example. So let's break this down here. We attach our pressure probe to the system and get our saturated conditions of 404A. 63 PSI and the corresponding temperature to 63 PSI is 25 degrees Fahrenheit. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna check with our pipe clamp on the outlet of the evaporator. And let's say for instance, we are reading 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our actual and we're gonna minus our saturated condition. So 35 minus 25, and that's gonna give us 10 degrees of superheat. The correct amount of superheat is really important because if we have not enough superheat, what can happen is we can actually start moving liquid towards that compressor. Compressors aren't designed to pump liquid, so if we move liquid towards that compressor, we can cause damage. Now, if we have too much superheat, what can happen is we can overheat that compressor very, very quickly. And overheating a compressor can lead to oil breakdown because oil has a certain point where it starts to break down. So if we bring too much heat back to that compressor, that compressor can run hot, and it can cause damage to the oil and cause damage to the compressor. It depends who you talk to in the industry, but there's usually a bit of a range there of optimal superheat. And that's usually between 7 degrees Fahrenheit to 12 degrees Fahrenheit. We don't have too much and we don't have too little. We're just nicely in that spot, that sweet spot. But it all depends on the manufacturer. Some manufacturers ask you to have a certain amount of superheat. Now, some manufacturers ask for evaporator superheat from the example we've shown. But some manufacturers might ask you for the superheat directly at the compressor. So instead of checking at the evaporator like we did, we would do the same, but we would check closer to the compressor because what can happen is after that suction line leaves the evaporator, it can pick up heat if it's uninsulated, if it's a long run, it can pick up heat. And when it gets to the compressor, even though it might be 7 to 12 at the evaporator, it could be substantially higher at the compressor due to various things, as we mentioned pipe length and insulation and if it's there if insulation is on the pipe or not or the insulation they've used like the r value of the insulation so we've kind of tackled superheat here evaporator superheat and we've touched on the fact that some manufacturers want superheat checked at the compressor due to the fact that we have a long pipe run and there's other factors involved so hope you enjoyed the video guys like subscribe hit the bell to the channel guys more education coming your way happy hvacking